Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants, I'm back, guys, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, what's up, y'all, welcome back, guys, welcome back, man, got another great video for you guys today, as usual, man, you guys know the deal on this channel, it's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, stopping them from rewriting history, guys, and in this video, man, we're going to talk about LeBron James and something I saw from a couple of days ago, I'm a little bit behind on this. Uh, but LeBron James complained to the referees while in street clothes in a game that he did not even play in. All right, so LeBron James sat the preseason game of the other day against the Phoenix Suns, right, the game before their last preseason game. LeBron James sat that game out. And during that game, at the end of the game, when Bronny was called for a flagrant foul, LeBron James decided to get up off the bench and complain and, and talk to the referees like he's their head coach. Once again, LeBron James proving to us that he is the real coach of the Lakers, not J.J. Redick. But once again, LeBron James exposing himself and once again showing that he has all this energy to complain to the referees, but he don't have the energy to play in the games because this is not the first time LeBron James has done this. I've seen him do this multiple times where he's on the bench in street clothes. They're not even playing the game, but still has energy to complain to the referees during the game, guys. It's really weird to me. And LeBron James does all the time and he did it the other day. And I want to talk about this video, man. Man, I want to thank you guys, man. Everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel. Once again, guys, I am truly, truly humbled by all support, man. Like I said, guys, it means a lot, man. You guys sharing your stories with me, liking the video, subscribing. You guys sending me messages. Thank you very much, guys, for real, man. It, it means a lot, man. Real recognize real. Shout out to everybody in the membership, man. Uh, shout out to our uh, special thanks out to uh, Illinois Gaming. Uh, shout out to Illinois Gaming uh, coming through with the super thanks. Uh, much respect to you, man. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate uh, your continued support and, and the comment that you left, man. So shout out to Illinois Gaming. Thank you very much, man. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. <laughs> and let's roll. So yes, guys, like I said, man, I want to do a brief video on this goofball LeBron James, man. And, you know, something that he's always doing that's becoming a pattern for LeBron James. Because when someone like LeBron James load manages, right? We've talked about it on this channel before. LeBron James and the load managing of this era, of the players today. And once again, it's not just load managing, but it's the type of players, the caliber of players that are load managing. There's no role players load managing or some guys that you don't know of sitting out games, taking games off. These are the star players taking off games, load managing on the fans, the star players, the guys who are getting paid the most money to play are the guys that are complaining about playing that don't want to play 82 games or 80 games or 75 games. These are the same guys crying and complaining about a 65 game minimum, which me and a lot of other people out there thought was too low. Was That was even too lenient for these players. I told you it should have been at least a 70 game minimum. Some of you guys said a 75 game minimum, but 65 is a joke. And these guys still found a way to complain about that. And they don't understand or get why they're being held to that standard and the past errors were not being held to that standard, right? Why did the guys in the past not need a league minimum? Because they showed to work. It's that simple, guys. It's that simple. There's no other way to explain it. There's no deeper meaning behind this. Simple as that. The players in the past showed up more often than not more consistently, the star players, and today they're not. And that's why they had to come with this minimum. But when we think about someone like LeBron James and we think about the load managing that he's done in his career, why is it more a glaring a black mark or a black eye, so to speak, on LeBron James as opposed to other great players or other players in general? The reason why it's more of a problem for a LeBron James, and I've told you guys many times, is because of the simple fact that LeBron James uses his durability, his longevity, the fact that he spends millions on his body and all this time and effort on his body. He promotes this stuff. So if you're going to promote all of this work that you put in in the offseason, the work that you put in during the season to stay in tip-top shape, then the result should be there. We should see you playing 75, 80 games every single season then. You're putting that work in. You're bragging about it. You're making everyone know about what you do because you do more than anybody else done in the history of the game. LeBron James spends more time, more money, more effort on his body than anyone else has in the history of the game. But yet still, that same person, LeBron James, has played 82 games one time in his career. One time, guys. And he's got many seasons of playing 60 games, 45 games, 55 games. That's load managing as finest. 
That's LeBron James obviously not doing what he's supposed to be doing in the offseason or during the regular season. Those fluff workouts that you see LeBron James post to Instagram or, or wherever the hell he's posting to Twitter, they're jokes. There's a joke workouts, man. This is why LeBron James is getting all these weird in injuries. And LeBron James is not tough. He's not a tough guy. So mentally, he's not tough. Physically, he's not that tough. So he sits out with sore ankles or a sore foot, right? They'll claim that he needed a surgery on something. Never got a surgery done. So once again, these are more narratives for LeBron James to excuse him. Oh, LeBron James played the whole season on a foot that needs surgery, that he needs surgery on. The offseason comes, no surgery happens. It's just another narrative, another excuse for LeBron James and why his team lost in the postseason. Oh, LeBron James was hurt. LeBron James has been load managing. LeBron James has been resting on defense, not doing a damn thing on defense, man. He's been doing that for years now, and this exposed him. So the other day, the Los Angeles Lakers played against the Phoenix Suns, right? And it was the game before their last preseason finale. And LeBron James did not play in that game, right? And no doubt, we know LeBron James is about to be 40 years old this season. So the preseason games do not, excuse me, matter as much for him. But once again, what have I told you guys? For a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron James should be out there. Because once again, your roster is in flux. You have a new head coach. If you want to be competitive, if you want to galvanize the teammates around you, build that camaraderie, that chemistry, LeBron James should be playing all these preseason games if we really want to be honest. But they're always worried about the wear and tear on LeBron James. But during the season when it comes, he'll still play 35 minutes a game and he still won't play a lick of defense. So this whole wear and tear that they're worried about for LeBron James this late in his career is irrelevant because LeBron James has been doing what he's been doing for years now so that he could still be playing at this age. LeBron James hasn't been giving max effort all these years and he's still able to play at 40 years old. He's been giving 70% of the effort, 50% of effort, not playing any defense out there to last this long. So once again, I'm not impressed with LeBron James playing at this age. But nonetheless, LeBron James sits out the preseason game against the Phoenix Suns. Kevin Durant was out there. Anthony Davis was out there. Devin Booker was out there. LeBron James not out there. But in that game, towards the end, Bronny James, right? LeBron James Jr., got called for a flagrant foul, right? He was assessed a flagrant foul, which is probably unheard of for the James family because LeBron James never even gets regular fouls called against him. And I posted that screenshot I've talked about on this channel. LeBron James has played in over 400 more games than Michael Jordan. 400 more games than Michael Jordan, a six foot six shooting guard. LeBron James has been playing power forward. He's been playing center for the last several seasons now. He's been playing an interior down low type game. LeBron James' entire game is, is predicated off him barreling into guys using his physicality. But he still weighs away from Michael Jordan in fouls, in personal fouls. Still hasn't passed Michael Jordan in personal fouls, even though you play in over 400 more games than Michael Jordan. And obviously, we know one of the main reasons is because he don't play no defense. He ain't giving the effort. So you can't be called for fouls if you're not giving the consistent effort. But the other side of it is also that LeBron James has been getting protected and always been getting the benefit of doubt calls. The benefit... From the referees, from the NBA. And that's why, to me, when I see LeBron James sitting out a preseason game, wearing civilian clothes, looking like a goofball, Bronny James Jr., right? LeBron James Jr. gets called for a flagrant foul. And here goes LeBron James, up talking to the referee with J.J. Reddick, with Anthony Davis. And the, the thumbnail to this uh, video is that shot, guys. Is that screenshot of all three of them talking to the referee after assessing Bronny, LeBron James Jr., this flagrant foul. Right? How dare you call LeBron James Jr. for a flagrant foul? And this is LeBron James standing up in civilian clothes right, in a game that you're not even in, in. You're not even involved in this game. You're literally set out this game. Once again, it's a preseason game. But here goes LeBron James. Got no energy to play in the preseason game. But he's got the energy to complain to the referees on the sideline and be that guy. And once again, embarrass himself, embarrass his son. And this all goes to why no one respects him or his son. So remember, you're leaving the legacy for your children to follow. And what legacy has LeBron James left for his son, LeBron James Jr.? Not a very good legacy, guys. A legacy of cheating the game. A legacy of being a poor sportsman, right? A, leg a legacy of forming super teams. This will be for LeBron James. It's been his legacy. The decision giving us the player entitlement era, right? LeBron James has been known to tweet out things against the fans and then delete these things because he gets exposed, he gets embarrassed, and he sounds like an idiot. Right? This is LeBron James. When he had that podcast, Mind the Game, and he was doing this with J.J. Reddick, literally every single episode he did, he contradicted himself from the previous episode. Or he spoke in complete 
uh, a hypocritical, a, a, a complete hypocrite when you listen to this man speak. So once again, how can you get behind a LeBron James? And this is why no one respects him, and this is why no one respects his son. If people had genuine respect for LeBron James, and this is what I've always told you guys on this channel, if you want to earn respect from other grown-ups, right? If you want your son to have that legacy that you left for him, right? Based off of the honor, the integrity, the class, that love of the game, and you earn that respect, then in turn, people would be respecting LeBron James Jr., but people do not respect LeBron James Jr. because they do not respect his father. So that goes directly to his father. But they'll still promote LeBron James as a great husband and father, even though he's not a great father. Once again, just because you're not a bad father doesn't mean you make you a great father. There are levels to being a father, guys. Right? It's not just great or bad. That's not how it goes. There's a spectrum here with being a father and what it entails. The things that you're required to do. The sacrifices that you have to make. To be a father. LeBron James is refusing to make these sacrifices. The man would not even sacrifice his career. He would not stop playing when his son was dying. His son almost died. And LeBron James just kept playing basketball. He didn't retire. This man should have stopped playing immediately. What are you playing basketball for? Then LeBron James turns around and then says what? Everything that I'm doing now is extra credit? I have nothing to play for essentially? So then why are you not home with your family? Why are you not spending more time with your children? You see what I'm saying, guys? This is where you get exposed as being a great father. You're not a great father. LeBron James does not care about his kids like many other real fathers out there do. Right? Do I say that LeBron James wants his sons to get? No. But if many of us out there, if we were secure financially, we didn't have to work to keep our life going, to support our families. If many of us were millionaires, billionaires like a LeBron James, and our children, our child was on death's bed in a hospital fighting for his life, dealing with whatever he's dealing with, many of us would have stopped doing whatever we were doing. Especially if deep down inside, we thought that we had nothing else to prove. As according to LeBron James. Got nothing to prove. Everything is extra credit for LeBron James. No, it's not extra credit LeBron James. It's extra money. That's what it comes down to. He's getting extra money. This is why he must always have max money, even though he's not giving the max effort out there on the court. He's not being a true leader and being a true competitor. And he's not a great father, man. So he has another legacy for his son, Ronnie. And this is why people do not respect his son. And this is why no one wants to give his son the benefit of the doubt or cut any, him any slack. Why would you cut him slack and his father's LeBron James? Why would you do it? Once again, th this is the legacy that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Right? The sins of the father affect the son. I've told you guys this before. And I've given you guys an example about this. Right? I told you guys. Now, when I was in high school, I was the oldest of four boys. You guys know this. But being the oldest of those of my brothers, I had to leave a legacy for them when I was in high school. So when I was a senior, my brother, my other, my next brother up was a freshman, right? We're three years apart. So he was a freshman in high school. I was a senior. So now I've been in this high school for what, three years now? This is my fourth year in this high school. I had established a reputation, right? I earned a reputation there. However way it was, whether it was a good reputation, a bad reputation, I earned a reputation at that school, and the reputation that I earned there was an, of an athlete, of someone that, you know, wasn't a, a, a bully. I didn't bully kids. I didn't make fun of people. I didn't cause trouble. I wasn't a knucklehead. I didn't cut class like that. I went to class. And why did I go to class? Because if I didn't go to class, I couldn't play in the sports. So once again, it held me accountable. Playing in a sport held me accountable to go into class, not starting trouble, not being a bully, not being a knucklehead or someone, like I said, that was going to give the teacher a hard time or, like I said, out there causing trouble. Being one of those guys. I wasn't one of those guys. I was what you would consider in high school a athlete, right? I wore my football jersey to school on Fridays, right? These are things that I did in high school. But I earned a reputation there, a legacy that I left there for my brother to follow, right? We all have the same last name. We all look alike. They know that that's my brother coming up. So in turn, if I would have been the knucklehead, if I would have been the guy who cut class, the guy who was a bully maybe, someone who started fights, right? It always gave the teachers a hard time, didn't play sports, cut class. If I did all these things and that was a reputation that I earned in high school, then what do you think that my brother's going to be viewed at? He's going to be judged off of how I was. They're going to be, oh my God, here comes a, another one of these guys. Coming up, another one of the family members coming into the school. So they're going to judge my brother based off of how I was. The legacy that I left for him to follow. You guys understand that? It's not the exact same, you know, example or perfect example. But it's a similar example. I'm talking about a legacy that you're leaving for someone to come after you. 
So once again, my brother was able to come into high school as a freshman and not have a target on his back by the administration in the school, the principals or the teachers are wary now of my brother because he's my brother. And they're like, oh man, I hope he's not like this guy. No, that's not the reputation or the legacy that I left. And once again, it went from my other brother to my next brother to my next brother. We all came through the same high school. We all played sports, basketball, football, right? We were all there playing and we all developed that same reputation and we left that legacy there. So now my brother is inducted into the Hall of Fame in that high school, all right? And that's built off of the reputation of legacy that we left. And I started there as the oldest brother. I started it and they continued it. So with LeBron James, he's left this legacy that's not been great. It's been tarnished because of the way LeBron James has carried himself. So he's not giving his son the best opportunity. It's the same thing he does to his teammates, LeBron James. He doesn't allow them to help him. So he's not helping them help him. He's not helping LeBron James Jr. He hasn't helped LeBron James Jr. Just because LeBron James Jr. is in the NBA, that's not helping him. Because he's not there off of his own merits, off of his own hard work. He's there off of the strength of being LeBron James' son. And that's not a good thing. That's not good to have your son in the NBA when he hasn't earned it on his own. You should want him to earn it. So then that way it means that much more. And for LeBron James to not be playing in the game, but you're still complaining to the referees, is an absolute joke, man. Like I said, LeBron James has done this in the regular season. He's done this many, many other times. This is not the first time he's done this just because it's his son. He's done it many times where he's not playing in the game. He's in civilian clothes, street clothes, and he's on the sideline complaining to the referees making a whole big stink, trying to be a coach, telling everybody else what to do. Meanwhile, you're not playing, dude. Why are you not playing? And once again, it's a preseason game, and we get all of that, but it's the Los Angeles Lakers. You guys need to build and establish some camaraderie, some chemistry. You have a new head coach. You got a couple of new players. Your son is there, and LeBron James is not in the game, but he decides to complain to the referee. And the, and the really crazy thing about LeBron James over all these years now, especially since he's been in LA, it's gotten even worse and worse, is that LeBron James continues to cry to the referees during the game, right, during the plays, after the plays, on the sidelines, when he's not even playing. And yet and still, the NBA has been giving this man, his team, all of these calls. So it's not like LeBron James is working the referees for some favoritism during the regular season because his team never gets calls or they're not getting the benefit of the doubt, or anything like that. Every single year, and I've done videos on it, I've given you guys the numbers. Literally almost every single year, LeBron James has been in LA. His team has been by and far and large, have the most fouls called in their favor, and the least amount of fouls called against them. And it goes all the way back, guys, to your time in Miami. They've been getting the benefit of the doubt for years. Years. I told you, LeBron James never gets fouls called against him. His team is always getting the benefit of the doubt, and yet he still complains this is where you look like a fool. What are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? Over the last two seasons, and you guys know this, the Lakers have been a plus 1,000. I think it's like plus 1,008. Free throws, plus 1,000, guys. It's been plus 500 each of the last two seasons. And it was plus, and all these other seasons too, guys. But over the last two years, they've been plus 500. Plus 500. And they're still hovering in the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th seed. Every year, guys. So with all of those extra free throws, all of those fouls called in their favor, right, going against the other team, they still are fighting for a play in every year. And they'll celebrate LeBron James' stats on a mediocre basketball team. They get all those free throws called in his favor, yet LeBron James still complaining and crying to the referees in a game that he's not even playing in because his son got called for a flagrant foul? What are you complaining about? And this is why no one respects LeBron James. This is why no one respects his son. And this is why no one's going to respect the Lakers. No one wants to watch these group balls. They're always complaining. They're always co they're, what are you crying about? You're complaining about a flagrant foul in a preseason game against your son. And like I said, guys, LeBron James has done this many, many times where he complains on the bench in street clothes. But he'll cry and moan and, like I said, make his opinion known. It's funny how LeBron James got something to say about everything that goes on. But he ain't got nothing to say about Diddy. He ain't got nothing to say about Shale Sonnen. He got nothing to say about those kinds of things, right? Nothing to say about this stuff, but he got something to say about everything else, right? So LeBron James got energy to cry and moan to the referees, but he ain't got energy to play in a preseason game. If you're not playing in a preseason game, you're supposed to be resting, right? Sitting out the game. You're not the coach. There's no need for LeBron James to be up on the sidelines in a game that you're supposed to be sitting on the bench. 
LeBron James is allowed to do all this stuff. No one else has ever allowed, been allowed to do these things. LeBron James can yell and curse the referees in a game he's not playing in. No flagrant fouls. No technical fouls for LeBron James. How many times LeBron James get called for a technical foul? I told you guys last season, LeBron James got called for a flopping foul. Flopping. He was, one, he was the first player in the NBA, guys, to be a, set, a flopping technical. LeBron James was. When, you, when have you ever seen LeBron James get called for a technical foul for arguing with the referees? And we're not talking about every once in a while LeBron James is being a little demonstrative with the referees. This is literally every game, every other play, every quarter, LeBron James is screaming at the referee, cursing at the referee's faces, making a big stink about literally nothing. LeBron James is always complaining about nothing. And once again, like I said, you do not have a leg to stand on when your team is literally in the top of fouls every year. I told you, I did the research, I did the video on this. Go look at Michael Jordan's teams from 1990 to 1998. And go look how many free throws they were assessed, guys. Go look at the plus and the minus. Go look at how many fouls were called against them versus their opponents. Go look how many free throws they shot versus their opponents. They're at the bottom every single season, guys. The Bulls were in the bottom in free throws attempted. Every year, they're in the bottom five. Every year, guys. Go check it out, man. Michael Jordan was, and team was not getting the benefit of the doubt calls like LeBron James' team has been getting for years now. And yet he still complains. So you guys, let me know if you saw that. ESPN took the video down already, I noticed. I went to go look at the video again today, and ESPN took it down. It was LeBron James in civilian clothes, game against the Phoenix Suns preseason. LeBron James' son, LeBron James Jr. gets called for a flagrant foul at the end of that game. LeBron James up on the sidelines, crying and complaining to the referees with J.J. Redick and Anthony Davis in a game that he's not even playing in. But LeBron James got all this energy to, to talk and complain and moan because it's what he does. And it's why no one respects him. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.